I love, first of all, that it's a story about amazing, interesting women who are really funny. Um, it's a, an underdog story, which I always find um, compelling. And most importantly, it's very joyful. Well, sequels just allow us to spend a little more time with characters that people love and uh, allow us to tell more of their story. And so, you know, it was just really fun to go back and think about where these uh, women would be at three years later, Where what, what has happened to the Bellas in the past three years, and what's the jumping off point for this story. And I think the notion of graduation, you know, it, it just, the first movie was about them coming together and being freshmen and and forming these bonds and now this film is about them breaking apart going their separate ways again leaving the nest and uh, the anxiety that goes along with that and sort of the legacy that you leave with your friends and the people that you leave behind the studio came to me very early in the process and said um, we think a young female director should take the reins. And I, I, I said, oh, I'm so glad you think she's young. <laughs> and, um, and it really was a culmination of a lot of work I had been doing. I'd been wanting to direct a feature for uh, a little while now and had been directing smaller things here and there when I could because, you know, as you know, I'm also an actor, so I don't always have the time and the schedule to direct a feature. And, I knew I was going to be making the time to do this film as a producer, no matter what. And so it just seemed the natural progression to take on the directing duties as well. At the start of Pitch Perfect 2, the Barden Bellas are three-time national champions who have been invited to perform for the President of the United States at his birthday celebration at the Kennedy Center. It's a performance that goes wrong and immediately makes our Bellas underdogs again in the world of acapella, or as um, Chloe says, laughing stock acapellas. And, um, and the journey goes from there. It's all about sort of winning back uh, their dignity and their pride and their place in the acapella pantheon. The Bellas get kicked out of collegiate competition, but they realize that they can still compete at the professional level. Um, and so they go, uh, they register and go to the World Acapella Championships in Denmark at the end of this film uh, to face their new arch nemesis, Das Sound Machine, who have come to America to take over the Bella's uh, victory tour, which they are no longer allowed to partake in for fear that they will, uh, that their performances will continue to go wrong. We knew, um, when Rebel very first walked in the door on the first film that she was Fat Amy, there was no other Fat Amy. You know, she owned it from the from minute one and really saw the opportunity to play this just charismatic, confident woman that never thinks about her size at all. And I, and I just love that about her, and everyone loves that about her. And um, and it's very true to her. You know, she, she really is someone who um, is proving every day that, you know, um, your body type doesn't determine your fate in life. And uh, she's really going to inspire a lot of people with the physical physicality of what she does in this film, too, and the dancing and singing and everything. Um, and giving her a love story was really important to me. I really felt like uh, she deserved it, and they have great chemistry, and it's really fun. The new sound that we went for was uh, Das Sound Machine really bringing in a European flavor, a little more rock into it. Um, There's 18 members of that group, so we had a lot of fun uh, just playing with the arrangements and what you can do vocally when you have 18 voices. It's really incredible. I mean, it sounds absolutely amazing. And, you know, and they do mashups. So much more sophisticated, layered music than the first film. Um, but the sensibility of it has not changed. We always knew we wanted to find a way to bring Anna Camp back, um, but also to give the Bellas like an excuse to basically go out in the woods and be really physical. <laughs> you know, I felt like a lot of the humor in the first film was all uh, was great and so many jokes, but I really wanted to expand the world into more physical humor this time around. 
and the camp let us do that in spades. And we happened to shoot it first up, and it really is about team building, and it really is about overcoming your fears. And so many of these girls did not want to, you know, they're afraid of heights, or they didn't want to do this, or didn't want to get wet, or they can't swim, you know. And we got everybody, like, up high, in water, over thing. You know, it was just incredible, like, everybody's commitment to it. And they all got to play and work together as a team, and it really was fun. The whole crew had a great time. So it was an awesome way to kick off the movie, and the footage is incredible.